Now, 360 cameras are useful, but I'll be honest with you. I, um, I had a lot of um, uh, failed attempts. Let's put it that way. Now, these lenses cover about 180 degrees, so they are highly distorted. And because it has two lenses, it has to take these images and stick them together. And in that process of stitching, okay, there are often small errors that are incorporated there. And those small errors cause problems for photogrammetry because in one image, right, you'll find the corner of a door, let's say, right? And then in the other lens, the corner of the door, if it's on a stitching line or, or, or it's not collected properly, it's somewhere else, okay, it's slightly off. And so the photogrammetry software has a little bit of a problem that way. If you use a really, really cheap, um, a really cheap 360 camera, you're gonna probably struggle with it, okay? So I've had some success with this and some different software, um, but again, um, yeah, you, you have to uh, really do some trial and error there. And what do you get out of it? What's the advantage of the 360? Well, if you imagine a room like this, Let's say, for example, I had to capture this whole room. If I'm using my digital camera, okay, and I have to cover the ceiling, the ground, uh, all the different objects in there, I'm going to be taking hundreds and hundreds of images, right? But if I use the 360 camera and I just go through there, what I can capture with 20 photos, right, very quickly, right, and these have um, high dynamic range, so they're HDR too, if you want, um, it saves me a ton of time, right? Whether I'm indoors or I am outdoors. And so this is an example of, uh, of the parking lot uh, just outside our office here. And you can, this was, oh, I probably did a few rows of, um, of capture, but you can see that I was able to get the ground. I was able to get the building and, you know, it's not going to win any awards, um, but, you know, I was able to get something in a very, very limited space of time. So you can see I have sort of three rows where I've walked down here and I've been able to uh, capture. Now, this is a low cost camera, but you know, if you want high quality, sometimes you gotta go a little bit higher, okay, on the, on the list here. So if you wanna invest in, in a uh, high quality 360 camera, then there are other options on the market. So this is one here, uh, this is from Vice. AG, and you can see, right, a very, a very specific tool here, um, 230 megapixels. So one of the issues with um, these types of cameras is that the uh, size of the image um, isn't as large, okay, when it's all put together as, for example, you know, something like this, the same amount of images. It would just be like a huge, massive image. So this gives you a lot of pixels to work with, and when you're working with a lot of pixels, you have a lot of ways to... Um, uh, or a lot of little points that you can uh, select from, or a lot of points that can be reconstructed in 3D. And for example, um, and so this is inside of a little cave and there's these sculptures. And so by placing the camera in a, you know, in whatever, 16 or 20 places, you can get, right, a 3D model like this. And so, um, which is super useful. Now, uh, somebody's asking here, what about a camera with six lenses or what about um, the individual uh, images? So in that case where you have individual images, so for example, if you're using a camera like this on a nodal ninja, so they sell these little devices that kind of hold them and then you turn them, use the individual images, right? You, then you don't have to worry about stitching, right? And using the 360. So I don't really have a lot of options on this one. And it's just easier to use the panel because the software just does all the work for you. Um, you know, you often get something, but you'll see a little bit more noise in your reconstructions. But if you can go back to the original images, okay, like this one here, um, and if I go back, okay, you can see, you can get a, a decent reconstruction. Actually, these little, these little blobs here are actually the lights that were lighting up this area. So I tried to reconstruct part of the lighting, but I know, just to give you an idea, okay, you can you can work with uh, the individual images if you have them. If not, you can try the panor panoramic images. And a lot of the software, okay, they usually have a specific feature or you have to tell it that the images that you're bringing in are panoramic images, okay? So I'm not gonna get any deeper into it, but um, that gives you an idea there. 